Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. We're going to look at one verse today. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Very familiar verses to many people. You should have memorized this verse. It's a great verse, strong verse, convicting verse. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you again for saving us from hell by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gospel where we put our trust on the finished work of Jesus Christ and we are saved and we are sealed to the day of redemption. But many times we have been ashamed of the gospel due to fear of man or due to any other reasons. Through today's sermon, Lord God, help us not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Help us not to be ashamed of you. Help us to be better Christians for you, Lord God. Give us more courage and boldness, Lord, to reach out to the lost souls, Lord. And for those who don't know the gospel, pray that you would make today their day of salvation. We ask you that you would fill the pastor with the Holy Spirit, giving the freedom, giving the liberty, giving the power and authority to declare the whole counsel to us. Yes. And open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. And we ask you that you protect us from devil's attacks. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The title of the message is Unashamed Christians. Unashamed Christians. So opposite is obviously ashamed Christians. Our text verse says that, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So what is the gospel of Christ right away? And everyone should know. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you think that you're going to heaven, besides from believing and trusting Christ through this gospel, then you have to check your salvation. You can't go to heaven by doing good works. You can't go to heaven by church attendance. You can't go to heaven by Holy Spirit experience so-called. You go to heaven through the gospel of Jesus Christ by believing on it. That's what the Bible says. That's the power of right. salvation. It doesn't say anything about the, you know, speaking in tongues or visions or any of those that experience. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1, Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So this is a gospel which during this church age, you and I get saved through because we believe on it, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. So we are saved because we believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ, which I believe, if not all, many of you in this congregation and people who are listening, you are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So this is a very dangerous part. Some people believe in vain. Who are those type of people? Maybe you are a kid. You know, now you're an adult. You grew up inside the church. You didn't know anything. You just repeat after a prayer after someone because, you know, your parents told you to do, your pastor, your Sunday school teacher. So you just, you know, think that you're saved. You know it in your head. You know, some people know it in their head because they hear this gospel preached unto everybody this day and age. You see it on TV everywhere. You hear it on radio. You see it in social media. But if you don't truly believe it from your heart and only this gospel first, then you're not going to go to heaven. Unfortunately, you end up in hell only believing it in your head. There are a lot of people who are churchgoers who will end up in hell because they only know it in their head, and that's a very dangerous thing. Verse 3, For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also receive, 
how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So your salvation should be based upon the word of God. I mean, we saw it last week, right? Second Peter chapter 1. Your, your evidence, my evidence, and my proof is in the word of God. Nothing else. Amen. You shouldn't bring anything else into it. If you do, then it could be questionable. Always, always, the foundation and the base should be the word of God. Verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So according to the word of God, you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says you're saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. As long as you do it from your heart, right? You know, I don't question anybody when they do it from their heart. I question people when they do it from their head, when they do it because of feelings, emotions, because they sometimes are forced to do. Don't ever receive Jesus Christ because you're forced to do it. It's going to give you a false sense of security. You have to do it from your heart. And people always ask, what does it mean to be doing it from your heart? When you say you love your mom, do you say, I love you, mom, 50%, 80%? You do it from your heart. You know, Father's Day is coming, June 16th. Do you tell your dad, I only love you 55%? No, you say, I love you, dad. You know, when you do it, you do it from your heart. It means that you're only trusting Jesus Christ to save you from hell. He's the only Savior that can save you from hell. And you trust it and you accept it in your heart as your Lord and Savior. That's doing it from heart. Believing without any doubt, without adding anything else. Then through that gospel, you're saved, I'm saved. And going back to Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you read it the other way, some people are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though he saved them from eternal lake of fire. Why? Because, you know... As Brother Jay prayed, you know, fear of man. Do you fear man more than God? A lot of times people fear men all the time. You're like, you have to hold your tongue because you don't know what that man will do unto you. Aren't you scared that what God will do unto you? And I always tell people when you're out there witnessing, don't worry about what man will do unto you. Worry about God. Because if they don't get permission from God, they can't do anything to you, right? Their father, according to John 8, 44, the devil has to get permission from God to hurt you. Then you do it. There are too many people because of their status, they are ashamed of gospel of Jesus Christ. What is your status? Do you have money? It could be gone just like that. You know, we've seen too many people this day and age you know, uncertain economy out there. You know, maybe you invested something. It could be just, you know, one false information, one wrong information, you know, downright, you know, something like pandem pandemic happens, you lose everything. So rich just could fly away anytime, right? I mean, do you have a high position, you know, in your company? Like, you do have to be, you know, wise about it. But is that your you know, imperative, is that your, you know, priority to hide who you are, right? You know, one thing that amazes me continuously is that, you know, those pro-Palestinian people, they're not ashamed of what they believe in. But funny thing is they don't even know what they're believing in. You know, there was an interview. They're interviewing this, you know, young woman. Do you know when you're standing up for Palestinians, pro-Palestinians, you're voting for genocide of Israel. You're also voting for, you know, homosexuals getting executed, right? You're also voting for silence of women, right? At first, she was like listening to it. She was like, I still vote for Palestinians, right? So the interviewer asked again, so you, you are for genocide of people, you are for killing of, you know, certain group of people, and you are also agreeing that you should be silenced because you're a woman. And now she got to be thinking, and she said, no, 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 you know, I don't, 
No, that's not what I believe in. But that's what you are standing for. Many of these folks out there, they're just blinded by the devil and the world system, so they don't even know what they're doing. You know, many of the people who get arrested, they don't even go to the schools. They just show up from somewhere because in the name of protest, and then they just are out there. But they're out there. They're not ashamed of what they're believing in. They should be ashamed in that case. But for us, you and I, we should never be ashamed of gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ will lead you to salvation. From eternal lake of fire in hell to eternal, you know, joy, life. Every good word you could throw it out there in heaven. Why would you ever be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? But again, because you fear men, you fear your change of status, right? And also because you live in sin. No, when you're living in sin, you can't have that conviction. How can I preach gospel of Jesus Christ when I'm drinking just like my buddy? How can I preach Jesus Christ you know, and I'm, when I'm committing the same sin as people in this world who I want them to get saved? Your heart might be there, but it's very weak because you don't have that testimony, because you don't have that you know, right living. That's why you constantly have to check Check your sins in your life. Because the less sins you have, the more power you have. The more sins you have, less power you have. It's simple as that. I mean, the you know, weighing balance is just, you know, the holier you are, purer you are, more close you are to the Lord in fellowship, you have more power. The less you are close to the Lord, you're living in sin, not getting right with the Lord, you won't have much power. Amen. Lord could still work through you because... Word of God will never come back void. Word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the Word of God will do its job. But you yourself won't have that much power. A lot of Christians, you lack power. You are, how should we say, weak, right? Obviously, we have to admit that we are nothing. We are only strong through the Lord Jesus Christ. But since you're not relying on Lord Jesus Christ, since you're relying on yourself, relying on your status, your sins, and all the people around you to get your life going, you can never be that strong. And when a Christian is ashamed, when Christian is not an unashamed Christian, his life is a mess. There's no joy. You know, people find strength when they preach the gospel. You, you're like, you know what, as a Christian... I lack this power. I lack this strength. I don't really feel, or I don't even understand, or I don't really know if I'm really doing the right thing. Then go out there, pass out tracks. Then you'll know, right? You'll know. Some of them might spit at you. Some of them might say hurtful stuff, but it doesn't really bother you because you love their soul and because... You're doing it for Lord Jesus Christ. You're not doing it for yourself. If I were to do it for myself and someone were to say such a word, it would offend me greatly. But well, you are offending Lord Jesus Christ. You're just doing what he's supposed to, he told you to do. I mean, going back to Romans chapter 1, let's look at verse 14. The Bible says, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarian, both to the wise and to the unwise. Why did Apostle Paul say that? We're debtors. You know why? Because if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're debtor to the whole world. Because you've been saved from hell to heaven. I mean, that's great. I mean, that's the greatest grace and mercy from God. How in the world can you not go out there and tell others about this salvation that you received? So I'm, that's why we go out there and preach the gospel. I mean, the Lord told us to do it. Not only that, we love their soul because we owe debt to them. They need to hear. Yeah. yeah. If unless someone did the same thing to us, we wouldn't be here today. Because someone had love for your soul, my soul, that they preached the gospel to us. And that's why we're here. And that's why you could continue not be ashamed 
but be bold when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then, you know, I thought about it, looking at everything going on in this world, then how can you become unashamed Christians? Point number one, you have to stand still. You have to stand still. This is a great verse. Let's go to book of Psalm, Psalm 46, verse 10. Psalm 46, verse 10. And it's like a life verse for many people. Psalm, for, Psalm 46, verse 10. You know, amazing thing is that when you see those protesters out there, when they stand for what they believe in, they don't move. They do not budge, right? You see the, I mean, the SWAT cars coming, you see police coming, everybody coming, but they do not budge because they are standing for what they believe in. And you have to be still, you know. If you don't want to be a shameful Christian, you have to be still. You know, tell little kids, what's the hardest thing to do? Staying still. Tell older people, what is still a hard thing to do? Staying still. Let's go to Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Stay still. If you are standing on the gospel of Jesus Christ, you have to stay. You have to stay still over there. It doesn't matter if they get angry at you. It doesn't matter if they cuss at you. It doesn't matter. You know, all these things are thrown at you. You just stay. You just stay. You know, stay still. Then you, you'll be amazing. You'll be amazed to see the things that Lord does when you stay still, you know, grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of people, when we go out there and street preach, you know, there's power in numbers, but you have to have that mindset. No matter what happens, I'm going to preach the gospel and I'm going to stand still wherever I am. Because the devil's going to do all he can to move you. Think about it. BLM, this pro-Palestinian, you know, abortion rights, all those things for the wrong reasons, but they stand still. Literally, I mean, you have to drag them out, right? I mean, they're believing something really sincerely, but wrong things. But they believe and they stand. As Christians, where is your stand, right? When you are preaching the gospel, are you standing still? Or because, oh man, that person's scary, so you start going back, right? You're trying to get out of the way. No, Lord didn't do that. Lord just stayed firm on his course, and he shed his precious blood on the cross and died for all of our sins. As debtors to this lost world out there, you and I have to just stand, right? They could run us over, right? You know, with their actions, with their words or whatnot, but you have to stand there, right? Because there's going to be one lost soul out there who sees that you're standing, and then they might get saved. Think about it. If it's just for that one lost soul out there, it's worth it. You and I are not in business to tell people that I led 1,000 people to the Lord. No. You know, that's just full of pride, haughtiness. We're here so that even one lost soul's out there, one lost soul, we want to be that instrument used by God to lead him to him. From hell, eternal lake of fire, to eternity in heaven. That's why you have to stand. I'm not sure where you are right now. You could be struggling because of your sin. You could be struggling because of your health. You could be struggling because of your emotions. You could be struggling because you did not have right doctrine. But now you have to stand with the right word of God, right doctrine, and with the right heart. You do it from your head. If you try to continue to just do it out of, how should I say, carnal joy that you receive or happiness that you desire, it's just not going to last long. Those things are like vapor just, you know, burns away. But if you do it for the sake of Lord, because you truly are thankful, think about it. You're thankful that Lord saved you from hell. 
and you want everyone else to know about it. You want everyone else to get saved, right? Because Bible says, Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lord does not want people to burn in hell. We got to get that out of the way. A lot of fundamentalists out there, they do things without charity. They don't do it with love. They do it because they feel like they have something that others don't have, but they want to attack, right? We do it because we love their soul first and most of all, and we want them to get saved. So they might not like the message, but we don't do it because we get joy out of them receiving and rejecting Christ and burning in hell. That's the last thing. So you got to do it with charity. So where are you standing today? Are you still standing stand, standing still in the perfect word of God, King James Bible, in the right gospel, and you're unmoving? You can't because, you know, for example, if someone says, you're out there street preaching, you know, witnessing, and they hate you. Hey, put that sign down. And then that looked like, a, you know, and then they do it in a, such a demeaning, meanful way. What are you going to do? Or you're going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. Are you just going to drop it? Uh, your thinking is that, oh, you know, they're going to drive away sooner or later. You know, I don't want any confrontation, and I'll just do it, you know. The, what, was Lord, you know, ashamed for even a second for what he was doing? No. He had that strongest conviction, love for lost world. You and me, enemies. You and I can never compromise in that way when you stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, you shove it up to their face more without breaking the law. Oh, maybe you can't see this. Here, here, you know. What did you say? You know, can I read this verse for you, right? We're not out there to start a fight. We're out there to preach the gospel. And preaching the gospel is preaching the word of God. Just read it, right? I mean, we have verses, right? The wicked shall return into hell and all the nations that forget God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what you got to do. Don't let the devil, the world, and your flesh, don't let them ever take your, you know, sign down, ever. You know, whether it's out there, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, you got to stand, right? If you are that sign, you can't. You know, you can't put that down, right? Amen. You're like, I can't offend that person, so I'm not going to say I don't drink, right? Tell them you don't drink. You know, are you scared? I mean, it's wrong. I mean, they should respect you for it. They might hate you. You know, they'll respect you for it. You know, you know, you know worldly people already hate Christians. And they're going to look down on you and hate you more if you don't even have a backbone to stand on. If you don't stand still, stand still. What are you going to do, right? Are you standing up for genocide? Are you standing up for killing of people? No, you're just standing up for what the Bible says as a Christian. You are a Christian, right? If you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, literally little, little Christians, right? Little Christ out there. Then if you are a Christian, then act like a Christian, right? Acting like Christian shows that you're not unashamed, you know, Christian. Secondly, let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. This is favorite verse for many of our men out there. I mean, ladies as well, you know, sisters. But this is a great verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. So number one, you have to stand still. And number two, the Bible says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like man, be strong. Let all things be done with charity. You have to act like a man. You have to act like a man, 
right? You know, when, when you think about the word ashamed, it reminds you of someone who's embarrassed of something, right? You know, when people say, I'm ashamed of my mom, I'm ashamed of my dad, right? You know, if they were to make a mistake, right? And uh, some people say because, you know, they're in jail or whatnot, I'm ashamed, you know, for what they've done, right? Because they're embarrassed to talk about it. I mean, are you ashamed to talk about Lord Jesus Christ anywhere, anytime when there's opportunity? Again, you, you just have to be wise about it, right? I mean, during a meeting, you know, when the company is paying you money, you don't want to be just taking over the meeting and say, hey, you must accept Christ or you're going to burn in hell when someone's doing a, you know, presentation. No, you got to be wise about it, right? You know, you have break time after work. You know, you have different opportunities. But when you do have opportunity, do you act like a man where you're not embarrassed of gospel of Jesus Christ, right? You know, Holy Spirit will convict you. Be a man. Give him a track. I'm, like, I'm embarrassed. Lord, I can't do it. I'm so weak. There's a difference between someone who's weak, doing nothing, and someone who's weak and relying on the Lord. And many Christians are just weak and just put their butt down and do nothing. But there are a few out there. Again, I don't expect because of law of, you know, averages, I don't expect every single Christian to be out there preaching the gospel, standing up for what's right, standing up for the word of God, standing up for Lord Jesus Christ, because it never happened throughout the history. But you don't have to be that person. Why is it that you have to compare to others? He doesn't do it, she doesn't do it, so I don't have to do it. What's wrong with you, right? Think about what the Lord did for you. If the Lord had that kind of mindset, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it for him, her, him, her, her, him, but then what's the point? You do it for everybody, every creature. Gospel should be preached to not the people that you like, not the people that you think is going to receive it. You preach to every single person who you think they're not going to receive it, who doesn't look good, who doesn't seem responsive, who, think, who you think that they're going to come out and punch in the face. You do it to those people as well. Preaching gospel to every creature out there, right? That's what the Bible says. You're not supposed to discriminate when you are preaching the gospel. If you are, then I guarantee you are embarrassed in a certain way. Why are you embarrassed of Lord Jesus Christ? Can you believe it? People are embarrassed of Lord Jesus Christ because you might not say it, but your actions say it otherwise. If I'm not embarrassed of Jesus Christ, Right? I'm going to proclaim him every chance I get. Uh -huh. I mean, one of the examples is this. Hey, it's, it's between you and the Lord, right? You and the Lord. You know, sometimes, you know, summer camp, you know, you know Brother Randy, you know, bless his soul. I mean, he, he provides, you know, T-shirts, you know. And a lot of times we have, like, a Bible messages on it, right? I seen, you know, I mean, young people, you know, especially after the summer camp, they really aren't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're really fired up serving the Lord. And I know those verses, some of those verses, they're going to offend people, right? Stand with that verse in a crowded, you know, I don't know, market or a mall or, you know, bus stop or where, whatnot. People want to read, and they're going to have their certain reactions, right? I could tell you they're not ashamed. They're not embarrassed. They'd rather have people read it, maybe come to the knowledge of truth, and possibly get saved, right? But for certain people, you know, that's the last thing you ever want to do, right? I never want to show to anybody in this world that I'm a Christian. I want to leave a very, very, how should I say, mellow, non-confrontational, you know, just regular life. Did Lord just live a regular life? If you want to do anything for anybody, whether it's, you know, for Lord Jesus Christ or anybody else, you can't be regular. 
But as Christians, you have a new man inside of you. You're still with the Holy Ghost. Lord giving you every single resource to do well. It's one story, one situation when you don't even have resources to succeed. For Lord actually lives inside of you, right? Man, you're part of the body of Christ. How do you not act like a man, like a Christian? That's why, you know, going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, the word quit you like man does not mean quit, like the, what we know it as quit. It means to, to do your part, to behave yourself, to bear yourself. So in this case, then, be like a man and act like a man. That's it. Bible says in first, and we saw it in Romans 1.16, preaching the gospel is not just for man only. It's for women, everybody, right? I mean, we know like women can be a pastor, you know, according to, you know, we read it in Timothy and stuff. But every woman, sister here, you should be out there preaching the gospel, right? And you tell them what Jesus Christ did for you. I'm telling you what he did for me. I'm telling you what he did for you. He died for me, was buried, and rose again from the dead. And came into my heart because I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Every single person should be out there doing it. It's not just, you know, burly man out there, strong man out there. No. It's for every single person, right? Whether you're big, small, old, young, if you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's your duty to be out there preaching the gospel, right? Well, you know, I don't want someone to misunderstand, you know, sister out there, okay, I'm going to be a pastor now. No, that's not what I meant, right? You know, that's not your role. Your job is to be out there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person, every creature out there. Then as we go back to, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, you know, you could see some of the things that you have to do. You know, you have to act like a man, act like a Christian in your words, right? I mean, watch ye, stand fast, quit you like man, be strong. You know, what are you watching today, right? If you want to stand for Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't want to be ashamed of Lord Jesus Christ, you should be watching for his return. Man, that's something you and I have to do. You know why sometimes you and I are, you know, acting like a shameful Christian? It's because we don't watch. We don't watch him to return, right? Then your priority, when you and I should be always looking up, we're looking forward to all the mess in the world, and we're looking down, right? Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. So think about it. Where are you watching today? You know, if you are always watching, you know, this terrible stuff going on in the world, and all you're watching is, you know, not most fruitful things on the internet, social media, or whatnot, then you can't be standing up for Jesus Christ because your mind is not at the right place. Your eyes are not at the right place. Look at Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you expect him to return today? Do you want him to come today? Amen. Right? Then your life will just change. Not only watching, right? Now, going back to 1 Corinthians 16, you have to stand, right? Again, you have to stand. You, you, you know, whatever happens, you shouldn't move, and you have to stand for what you believe in. And the only way you could stand with the Lord if you have right fellowship with the Lord. That's why you have to check. Do I have right fellowship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I mean, do you have fellowship with him? Which means, do you pray? Do you read the Bible? 
Do you preach about him? Are you doing the right things that you're supposed to do as a Christian? Spiritually speaking, right? If you are head of the, I mean, if you are a man, if you are a wife, you know, husband, children, are you doing your duties like you're supposed to? If you're working at work, are you doing your best as if you're doing it unto the Lord? So every part of your life, are you doing best for the Lord? You know, if you're not, then you can't really stand. Because when enemy attacks you, enemy is always going to look for that, you know, weakness. Weakness. Oh, this guy, when it comes to the word of God, strong. Prayer, strong. You know, being a strong family person, good. Oh, but I see that, you know, weakness at work. You know, this guy, this woman at work, man. And I think I could attack that person. Devil knows your weakness is the best. And he's always going to attack it. So what you have to do? You have to get right with the Lord and get strengthened in that area. You know, all you're going to do is if you just stay the same and do nothing, you're just going to let the enemy just attack you at the same spot. You know? I mean, when, when people are fighting, if they see a weakness, they go for the weakness to win the fight. What would they, you know, if, if a boxer knows that, you know, someone who he's fighting, they have, you know, I mean, facing up, they're invincible. You know, their defense is perfect, but their abdomen area, they're always weak in defending it. Then why would they keep on attacking the face area? They're going to attack the abdomen because it's weak. So you have to realize, and I don't know, brethren, you know yourself. You have to understand where you're weak at in your Christian walk, right? You know, it could be praying, it could be reading the Bible, it could be, you know, I don't know, certain sins and all those things. You have to get right with the Lord. And you have to be strengthened in that area. And if you were to do that, then you could be strong, right? Lord commanded you and I to be strong and be courageous. You know, there's no way in the world Without the strength of, you know, our Lord, we can't be out there, like, preaching the gospel like we can. We could do it because he's inside of us. He gives us strength. I mean, you know, there's some great Bible verses, and this is one of them. Let's go to the book of Joshua. Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. And usually, you know, when Dr. Ruckman, you know, talks about, Signing Bible verses and stuff. He usually writes this as well. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Brethren, if you've been living like a shame Christians, or if you've been compromising, if you've ever been embarrassed, you have to get right with the Lord. And that's all you got to do. What can you do, right? Are you going to justify yourself? Oh, no, world's too strong. Devil's too strong. It's my job. No, no, no. Just be honest. Just get right. Admit that you've been a terrible, horrible child of God Christian. And then wait. And then just get up and become a better Christian. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Bible says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou Dismay. You know, the Lord said, be strong. And he said, have a good courage. He didn't say, like, you know, be a weakling, you know, wimpy. No. He said, be strong. I mean, good courage. Right? And be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. Expect the world, the devil, and the flesh to attack you in a way that's going to try to hurt you the most. It's normal. It's the enemy. We're in a spiritual war. But this is what we have. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. But he's inside of us. I mean, we are fighting with the creator of the universe. We're fighting with the most powerful being in the whole wide universe. What are you afraid of, right? When you put yourself in that mindset, you know, all these years, all these months, all these days, you know, if you've been saved for a short period of time, what was my problem, you know? Why was I scared, right? 
What was I trusting all this time when all I needed to do was trust my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and just move on? Wars are won by people who follow great leaders without any hesitation, right? You have the greatest, you know, general ever, Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. You just follow without any questions. Then you're going to win. Many times you and I get, we stumble and we don't win because we start looking everywhere else instead of just looking at our Lord and just trying to finish this battle. As you look at your Christian walk today, just think about when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, how you have acted when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number one, if you trusted the gospel of Jesus Christ, you you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the greatest decision you've ever made. You're saved from hell, right? You have eternal life. However, afterwards, again, the Bible says you and I are debtor to the whole lost world. What have you been doing, right? Are you preaching the gospel every opportunity that you have? Are you actually, you know, I'm using this word very carefully, are you you actually really proud to be that person that God can use to preach the gospel? You know? You know, parents have pride in their children when they do so well, right, when they listen to them. Don't you think God will be proud seeing you doing what he told you to do? But not doing it like a robotic sense, but you're doing it out of your heart, out of your love for the Lord, for God, for the lost world out there. Then you have a victorious Christian life. Then just like Joshua, man of war, you know, all his life, you're going to win the battles in your spiritual war. You know, you know, you know what's greatest feeling for people who's in a war when they win, right? When they win the battle each time when they have a battle, when they fight, you will have a lot more joy in your Christian walk. You have a lot more charity and love for the everybody lost saved, you know, people around you. And ultimately, you have a closer relationship with the Lord. When you continue to fight for the Lord, just remember that. Every time you fight for the Lord as he's in you, you're always a winner. You will never lose, right? It seems like you're losing. It seems like you lost, but you never lost. In the Lord, you and I are always victorious. We should never forget that as Christians. Are you an unashamed Christian or are you a shameful Christian? Let's pray.